Chess friends, how are you? I hope you are doing well, it's been a very long time since I uploaded any videos on this channel, but starting today, I will try to upload videos regularly, in this game, I played against Leela Zero, it was very exciting and full of romantic moves, this game is from the Bullet Championship, which is currently taking place on chess.com, the game is very authentic and logical, so, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with e4, and she responded with e5, after that, knight f3 happened. Here, Leela could go with knight to c6, bishop out to c5, or a move like pawn to d5, which is completely viable and logical however, she decided to go with d6, which is called the Petra of defense, this allowed me to open up the center by playing pawn to d4, after captures on d4, another move black could play is knight to d7 to protect the e5 pawn, a move preferred by many chess players, although it is a very tactical move, white can counter with bishop to c4, after c6, white can logically play knight to g5. Attacking the pawn on f7, the best move for black here is to capture the pawn on d4, but if black responds with knight to h6 to protect the pawn, white can play the hidden and surprising move pawn to a4, this move is full of tactics, for example, if black plays a normal move like bishop to e7, white can respond with bishop takes f7, sacrificing the bishop. After this, knight to e6 will come, trapping the queen, the queen has only two squares to go, if queen a5 check is played, white responds with bishop to d2, regardless of black's move, the queen is effectively trapped. For instance, if queen to b5 is played, white can play knight to c7, forking the queen and king, even if black plays queen a6, knight c7 will come anyway, trapping the queen, if black plays queen to b6, it will be met with pawn to a5, attacking the queen, regardless of where the queen moves, knight to c7 will come, forking the queen and king, ending the queen's role in the game, if queen to b4 check is played, c3 will trap the queen, leaving no retreat except one square. After which knight to c7 check followed by king to d8 and knight to a3 will trap the queen completely, you can see that the queen has no retreating squares, and the game is over for black. Going back to the position, at this juncture, Leela didn't play knight to d7 because she is not a full human chess player like you or Hikaru Nakamura, she decided to capture the pawn on d4 and then played knight to f6, creating pressure on the pawn, after bishop d3 to protect the pawn, I wanted to play pawn to c4 before moving my knight to c3, both sides castled, and you can see that pawn to c4 is viable, which I considered in the game. This move over protects the d5 square, allowing the knight to consider knight to c3 and dominate the center squares, it also provides an open diagonal for the queen, enabling the rook to come to c1 in the future to gain access to the c-file, after knight to d7 by Leela, c1 aims to dominate the center. It's a hard strategy, after knight to c3, the rook here and the bishop moves back to the c2 square, you can see that pawn to b3 and pawn to f4, queen to f3, and pawn to f5 can come into play, opening up the diagonal for the light square bishop, both bishops create significant pressure against the black king. Additionally, the knight can move to the f5 square to create counterplay in the center and king side, the position is just busted, Leela had to play very accurately, otherwise, she would lose, which is why she responded with a6. And let me inspire you by making a beautiful quote. Every morning when you wake up, be grateful, someone did not get a chance to wake up today. This move, a6, is very reliable and defensive, can you guess what I actually played in this position? You might consider the move pawn to g4, this move is very authentic and effective, creating significant pressure on the king side, by pushing the pawn and, and positioning the knight on f5, white can generate counterplay, even if black tries to play a6 to protect that square, pawn to f4 can follow, adding more flexibility and threats such as pawn to e5, moves like f5 or h3 will further solidify and energize white's pawn structure, however, some might argue that the white king becomes vulnerable on the king side, opening up the diagonal, despite this, black's pawn structure is very passive, preventing the dark square bishop from coming to c5 to apply pressure along the diagonal, 
the king is safe, and bishop to e3 might come to support the position, after g4 was played, Leela responded with pawn to g6, trying to solidify her king's side with the king's Indian defensive structure, the knight puts pressure on the g4 pawn, leading to pawn to g5, which forces the knight to h5, this is exactly what happened in the game, after knight to h5, I played pawn to f4, threatening queen to f3 followed by f5, which would open up the f-file and the bishop's diagonal, this strategy is very advanced, resembling computer-like precision, it's something that very few humans would consider because we're playing at a 4000 LO level, and you are at the ground level compared to me. If you enjoy my analysis, welcome to my show, the 4000 LO rated show. After the bishop moves back, I played pawn to a4, this move is strategic because pushing my pawns on the king's side opens up space and mobilizes my pieces. By playing f5 and capturing, I can target the knight on h5, which becomes stuck and ineffective, this opens up the diagonal for an attack on the king's side. In this position, Leela played knight to b6, followed by queen to d3, a few moves later, I moved my king to h1, and Leela responded with pawn to c5, attacking the knight on d4. This forced my knight to retreat to a light square, earlier, Leela had played bishop to g4 to control these light squares, after my knight retreated. Leela maneuvered her knight by playing knight to d7, when my knight reached d5, it controlled many central squares, showing the strength of this strategic maneuver, so Leela takes the free pawn on the b2 square because she likes my gift very much, after my rook moves to b1, it becomes evident that I didn't capture the pawn on the b7 square because it would be followed by rook to b8, allowing black to capture my knight, in the future, when I push my pawn to f5, black can respond with knight to e5. Attacking my queen and eliminating my attacking pieces, that's why I decided to play passively and move my bishop to d1 to control the diagonal, I also aimed to push the pawn to a5 to open up squares for an attack on the king's side. After b5 and captures on b5, Leela gets the open a file, when I moved my bishop to h3, attacking the rook, black can involve her queen to initiate an attack on the b5 square along with the rook, but for now, black attacked my rook on f1, so I moved the rook, after the knight moved to b6 and exchanges occurred, I played bishop to b3, attacking the pawn, black then moved the bishop, back to d7 to increase the pressure on the pawn, I moved my knight back to d2, and black responded with rook to b8, at this point. Capturing the pawn on b5 of the bishop, would be a mistake because of bishop takes f7, which would expose the b-file, allowing me to capture black's bishop, after rook to b8 and f5, I aimed to disrupt the king's side structure, black responded with bishop takes b5, and I decided to sacrifice my bishop on f7, gaining tempo on the king. After that, I moved my knight to c4, putting pressure on the queen and attacking the bishop with the rook and queen simultaneously, first, the queen is under attack, so many might consider playing queen to c6 to protect the bishop and avoid the knight's attack, but white can play knight takes d6 check, forking the pieces and attacking the bishop on b5, as the king moves back to protect the rook, I can capture the bishop, after captures. Black cannot immediately capture the knight on d6 because bishop takes c5 would pin the queen to the king, if black captures my queen, I can capture with my knight, resulting in a favorable endgame position for me with an extra pawn, if black captures the pawn on e4, I can respond with bishop takes c5 check. However, in our actual game, noticing that queen to c6 is not viable, some might argue for queen to c7, but this move would follow the same tactical motive, knight takes d6 check, as the king moves back, I can easily capture the bishop with my knight, which is well protected by my rook. And let me tell a divine quote with you. We have control over our work and actions, but we have no command of the results. Seeing that any queen move is not viable, Leela decided to move her queen back to f8 to safeguard her king, which is a very good and authentic move, my knight is pinned by the queen, so even if I capture her queen, she can easily capture mine, therefore, I decided to do an exchange sacrifice by capturing the bishop on b5, after she captures, I played queen takes d6 check, forcing the king to move, regardless of her move, 
the position is busted for black, so she plays king to g8. I respond with queen to d5 check, and after the king moves to h8, I can respond with knight to d6, forking the queen and the rook simultaneously, what should you play in this position as black? Some of you might consider saving the queen by playing queen to b4, but it is a completely rubbish move as I can respond with knight to f7 check, forcing the king to move, after knight to h6 check happens, you can see that this position is just busted, the queen can easily come to f7, and if the king moves to h8, I can respond with the cunning move queen to g8 followed by rook takes g8, then, knight to f7 will deliver a single knight checkmate on the board. What an astonishing and amazing checkmate it is, going back to the position, any queen move is just busted, which is why Leela responded with queen to b3, attacking my queen, in this position, knight to f7 is not viable because the queen is protecting that diagonal, after the knight check, the king moves to g8, knight to h6 check, and even if you play king to h8, queen to g8 is not viable due to queen takes g8, and this game might end in a draw, therefore, in this position, we have queen exchanges. After I capture the rook, I capture the pawn on c5, you can see that Leela cannot capture the pawn on f5 because I can advance the passed pawn on f5, making it very winnable for me, after the rook moves to f1, and following some exchanges, we have knight to f6 check, the king has no squares to go, so it must capture on f6, after the capture, it becomes a connected passed pawn, after a couple of moves, Leela picks up the pawn, and after f5, f6 and f7 happen, at this juncture. You can see that the bishop can be captured by the black rook however, if you dare to do so, then after I play rook to d8, the pawn can promote to a new queen on the e8 square. After exchanges, it will be a rook and pawn versus one pawn and the bishop, a completely winnable game for me. Going back to the position, we have rook check on c3, voluntarily attacking the bishop, after some moves, we have g4 check, after a couple more moves, we have bishop to d4, voluntarily attacking the bishop, when rook to h8 happens in the game, you cannot capture the rook because after I promote to a new queen and the king moves up, queen to d7 check will attack both the bishop and the king simultaneously, in this position, we have bishop takes h8, after I promote my queen, this position is completely winnable for me, after a few more moves, you can see that my passed pawn is advancing, and after a few moves, we have queen to c8 check and mate, what an incredible game it is. If you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye, see you.